Hello everybody, welcome again to my kitchen and to another episode of Swamp Yankee Cooking. Today I'm going to show you one of my quick and easy favorites for what to do with that leftover steak. Chances are, if you have a steak, if you're anything like me or any of the people I know, there's never any leftovers, but if you just so happen to have some, like I have here in this case, it's a perfect candidate for making a steak and cheese. Now this is another super easy meal that anybody can make. Doesn't matter if you think you're a bad cook. Doesn't matter. This is easy. You can handle it. If you can operate a knife and a stove, you're all set. So I have my cast iron pan heating up here. I always use cast iron. It's my favorite. I'm going to start off by slicing up and sautéing an onion. I start by cutting off the two ends. Cut it in half that way, and then the skin peels off pretty easily. Like so. Then I'll cut it lengthwise again like that and slice it into maybe quarter inch wide slices. And that's how I prefer it for a sandwich. Now make sure to put a little bit of oil into your pan. This is olive oil. You can use anything really. Butter isn't such a great option because it tends to burn very easily. But either olive oil or vegetable oil work pretty well. So I'll get these cooking a little bit. And while they're doing their thing, I'm going to take my steak. Just slice it up into pieces. I prefer to do strips like this. But again, it really doesn't matter. While you're at it, make sure to cut off all the chunks of fat. Don't cook the onions on too high of a heat. I have this on, uh, I'd say, medium or medium low. You can't cook the onions too fast or too hot because they'll just burn. In order to caramelize them and get them all sweet and delicious, you have to cook them relatively slowly and at a low temperature. Okay, so these onions are starting to get translucent, as you might be able to see. So I'm going to slide in the steak and let that get a little bit cooked. Keep in mind, it doesn't really need to cook anymore because it was already cooked last night, but just to warm it up. Now, if you so desire, this is a good time to toast your bread. I also keep my bread frozen. It stays longer that way, so of course I'm going to have to defrost it anyway. So I'm going to put this in here and get it, get it toasted. Now I have some pepper jack cheese here. I'm going to slice it up thin and chop it up in pieces and mix it in with the steak and the onions. Of course you could use a cheese grater or just buy it pre-grated or whatever, but I don't buy it pre-grated and I really hate cleaning a cheese grater. It's just a pain in the ass. So. I'm just going to chop it up with a knife, and it'll be just as easy. Okay, so I think it's ready for the cheese. I'm going to spread it out a little bit. Whoops, pop the cheese on there. Then just let it sit for a couple minutes while the cheese melts in. Make sure the cheese doesn't get on the pan, or near the pan, because it's just going to melt and burn on the pan, and it's not going to be in your food, and that's no good. Okay, here we go. Might be a little too much to fit on the one piece of bread, but oh well. That's what forks are for, I guess. Oh, look at that heaping pile of steak and cheese deliciousness. Now season it with a little salt and pepper if you so desire. I did use pepper jack cheese, but a little extra pepper is good. Sometimes I put hot sauce on it. Frank's Red Hot is my favorite. A little salt. Now here's a, a trick for you guys. 
if you've ever been in a hu if you live in a humid climate and you're tired of your salt getting stuck in your salt shaker because it won't come out the holes because it's humid and the salt absorbs the water, just put it in a little bowl like this and pinch some salt out of it. Some people that might be uh, germaphobes might not like it because you're sticking your fingers in there, but I don't particularly mind. Oh, another reason I like to toast my bread, it gives a little bit of structural integrity because this sandwich is going to need it. Look at that. This should be uh, accompanied with a salad, of course, to balance everything out. Now let's, now let's make sure I did a good job here. Mmm. Well, I'll say so. It's uh, that's quite good. Now, of course, you uh, when you're taste testing something, you have to take a, a second bite to make sure it's just as good as the first one. Yeah, yep, just as good as the first one. Well, everybody. Thanks for joining me again in my kitchen. I hope these cooking videos inspire you, especially if you're not the cooking type. I aim to show you that, yes, you can cook. It's not that difficult. So, enjoy your meal. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button or the subscribe button if you haven't already. And thanks for watching, and as always, come back for more.